Welcome to Excel magic trick number 1410. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we got to see how to calculate closing balance for each month from a balance transaction table. So here's our balance transaction table. And I made just a small table just with two customers, control down arrow. It's not even that big. But the fundamental problem for us, if we're getting the ending balance, is I need to, for January, find the last day of the month and add all the values on the last day of the month. Now, our table over here is going to have the row headers, the actual end of the month. For our report, we actually need the end of the month. But here's the problem. When we get to some months, the actual ending balance does not fall on the last day of the month. So over here, if we're using end of the month as criteria, somehow we're going to have to pick out these two records, add these two numbers. All right, let's come over here. Now, I'm going to use the sum ifs. But when I get to criteria, I'm going to have to, from this date, pick out the last date. So let's look at internally how we're going to do that, because this will be the criteria for some ifs to add. Now I'm going to start off the first example will be only if you have Excel 2016 Insider Edition. Hey, I'm just going to use the max ifs function. Max if, well, where is the max range? Those are the values we want to find a max in. The date column. Now this is an Excel table, and so I can point to the very top part of the field name or column header. And when I see that black downward pointing arrow, I can click. And it puts the table formula nomenclature in. That's the table name. And then in square brackets, the field name, comma. Well, the criteria range is going to be the very same column, comma. And then the criteria. I want to look through every single date and ask, are you less than or equal to, and you've got to put your comparative operator in double quotes, are you less than or equal to, and we join it to the end of the month date here. Right now, what does max ifs do? It finds true for all of these dates. And so all of these dates, max will look through, and it will pick out 131, 2017. But when it gets to February, it's going to get a true for everything less than 228. But since 227 is the max, Max ifs will report that. Now, close parentheses, Control Enter, Control 1, Date. I'm going to hit Enter, and then double click and send it down. And there we go. As our criteria inside of some ifs, it's totally going to work. Control Z, Z, F2. Now, this max ifs and a few other examples do not depend on the fact that this column is sorted. If this column is always sorted, there'll be a different, easier way to do this. All right, but max ifs doesn't care how this table is sorted. You ready? Equals sum ifs, our sum range. Since we're trying to add, I click right above balance AR. There's our table and field name, comma. Criteria range, now I'm looking through the date comma, and then there. The max ifs will deliver the criteria to some ifs. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. Go to the last cell, F2. Cell references are looking good. Escape. Now I'm going to come up to the top cell, F2. And very carefully, I'm going to copy the first part of this, because I'm going to use it a few different times. Control C, Escape. Now, if you have Excel 2010 or earlier, instead of using max ifs, we can use the aggregate to get our date. Now, the great thing about aggregate is it has a bunch of functions. And we would like to use max, but we can't because functions 1 to 13 do not allow array calculations. And we're going to do an array calculation. But luckily, number 14 is large. If we say large 1, it's the same as doing max comma. We're going to have errors in our array operation. So I'm going to use 6, tab, comma. And then the array. We're using the actual top argument, not the bottom one. Array, hey, I need to pick out the date. So I'm going to say, hey, the whole date column. And we're going to divide it by, in open parentheses, the date column. But I need to pick out only the ones that are less than or equal to 131. So I do a direct array operation. Hey, how many of you dates are less than or equal to that end of the month? Close parentheses. Now, if I highlight just the 
denominator and hit F9, notice we get trues and falses. Trues in the denominator will serve as 1. False will be 0. So what happens when we evaluate trues and falses in the denominator with a bunch of dates? F9. We get all of the valid dates that are less than or equal to. Divide by 0 comes from dividing by false or 0. Guess what? 6 will ignore all of those, and it will pick out the right date. Control Z, comma, K. We want max, so we put, hey, please get the first biggest. Close parentheses. Control Enter, Control 1, Date, Enter. Double click and send it down. We can see we get all the correct dates. Control Z, Z. Now I come to the top, F2, and backspace, Control V. Come to the end, close parentheses. So we have our sum range, our criteria range, and then the criteria is aggregate. We're using aggregate instead of max ifs, like in the first one. Control Enter, double click and send it down. Now, if the table is always sorted, there's a much easier way to get that date, and it is using VLOOKUP. I simply look this data, comma, look through just the single column, comma, I want to return something from column 1, comma, and I definitely want to do approximate match. Since that's the default, I backspace. I don't even put that range lookup argument in. Close parentheses. Now, how does approximate match lookup work? Well, it takes this date, and as a metaphor, it races through until it finds the first bigger one, which would be 215, jumps back and gets that one. It actually does a binary search, but that action, because it's sorted, will always get the last date. When it gets down to 228, it'll race through, find the first bigger one, jump back, and get 227. Control Enter, Control 1, Date, Enter. Double click and send it down. So we see we get the correct date down the whole column. Control Z, Z, F2. I'm going to come right to the beginning, backspace, Control V, close parentheses. So we have some range, criteria range, and V lookup. Because this column is sorted, it's going to get the right value. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Now we'll sort this at the end after we do our last example and prove that this one will not work now. If we were before Excel 2010, like 2007, 3, we could no problem just use the max. And then inside the max, we need only a certain number of dates. So I'm going to use the if function to filter that whole date column. Logical test. I'm going to say the whole date column, how many of you are less than or equal to the end of the month? If you are true, comma, then what do I want? I put the whole date column, comma. Because I'm going to leave false out, backspace, not even put it in, wherever it gets a false, a false will be put into the returned array. Close parentheses, close parentheses. And now I would like to come inside max, click number one, and hit the F9 key to prove that, sure enough, there are our serial number dates and falses. Notice with max and if in a direct array operation, instead of divide by zeros, we're getting falses as our filter. Luckily, max function and all aggregate functions are programmed to ignore that false. Control Z. Now, this direct array operation right here is sitting in the logical test argument. And that argument cannot calculate an array operation correctly unless we use the keyboard Control Shift Enter. Now, back with aggregate, aggregate is one of five functions that automatically can calculate array operations. So if we enter this, we have to use Control Shift and Enter. Immediately, we have to go up to the formula bar and verify that the curly brackets have been put in. Those curly brackets are Excel saying, hey, I understood this is an array calculation and calculated it correctly. Control 1, Date, Enter. Double click and send it down. We can see we have all the correct dates. Control Z, Z, F2. Come right after the equal sign, backspace, Control V, close parentheses. So in this formula, we have sum range, criteria range, and we're doing a direct array operation inside of criteria one argument. Now we have to enter with Control Shift and Enter. I verify the curly brackets. We're good to go. Double click and send it down. 
Now, what happens if we come over and sort? Hey, I want to see the largest balances on the top. Max ifs, aggregate. And an array calculation with max and if all work correctly, but not VLOOKUP. Approximate match lookup depends on this column always being sorted. Control Z. All right, that was a little fun with sum ifs and max ifs, sum ifs and aggregate, sum ifs and VLOOKUP if it's sorted, and sum ifs with a direct array calculation using the if and max function. All right, we'll see you next video.